the best, hold on, hold on, the best running shoes of 2023. Now, in the year, I've reviewed some amazing shoes and I thought I would give you a list of the best of them. I think to give you a good list, you need someone who is creative, someone childlike, to be innovative, open-minded. The best running shoes in 2023. We're gonna be listing many, many brands, such as On, Puma, Nike, Ultra, oh man, Adidas, Hocker, Asics. Okay, now to categories. We're gonna be listing those into categories, such as daily trainers, super trainers, super trainers with max stack, daily trainers with max stack, and, and race day shoes, yeah. Yeah, all right, let's do this video now. All right, all right. Cool, let's get started. In the daily training category, we have got the Ultra Touring 7, yeah. Thy Vomero 17, yeah. Cloud Flow 4, triple yeah. Cumulus 18, yeah. 25. 25, yeah. <laughs> well done to the little guy for introducing this category. The daily trainers category, this one, is not your max cushion daily trainers, it's just your workhorses. Just get the shoes on and go. So, starting us off at number five is Ultras Touring 7. I enjoyed this shoe, I ran Rygate 10K in it. It's really, really good and it's unique. It's the only shoe amongst the entire collection you're about to see that is a zero drop shoe, meaning the stack and the forefoot, same height, zero drop. I enjoyed this shoe, the comfort is great. I had it since the tour in five. Let's move on. Getting us to number four, On Runnings Cloud Flow 4. I enjoyed this shoe. Now the reason why this shoe is number four as compared to the three, two, one, the other shoes I'm about to show you offer you a bit more comfort and cushioning. Same level of return of energy, but I have to say this is the most good looking shoe that I own in my entire collection, let alone in this category. So, On Running's Cloud Flow 4, absolutely recommend it. All right, number three, I don't have any more. The reason why I don't have it anymore, well, it's the Pegasus 40. The reason I don't have it anymore is because of the number one shoe in this category, and I didn't feel like I needed both. And so, I sold it and that is the Pegasus 40. Great shoe all around. If you know someone that's trying to get into running, that's the shoe you wanna recommend. It's a daily workhorse and it's on version 40. That tells you how many iterations Nike has put into it and so a lot of innovation and learning has been invested. Let's go. Right, number two, the Cumulus 25 from Asics. Great shoe. This. The bigger brother to this is in a different category and we'll get to that, I don't wanna spoil it. It's a great shoe and it's one that I find reaching for, for just simply getting the shoe on and getting out the door. The reason why the bigger brother, the Gel Nimbus 25 is in a different category is the comfort that that offers. The Cumulus 25 doesn't offer you that comfort, but it offers you a better return of energy, better price and performance in that kind of sense. Okay, drum roll. Brrr, number one, Nike's Vomero 17. This has just come out. Now I mentioned the Pegasus 40. Because I've got this, I don't need the Pegasus 40. For me, I feel like Nike has duplicated itself in a way. And I have to say, this shoe completely takes over from the Pegasus 40. And I feel it's why Nike releases, always releases this shoe after the Pegasus 40. Well, I think that's the sequencing. The materials, the cushioning, um, the feel is much more of a level up from the Pegasus 40. And in my opinion, within the daily trainer workhorse category, this definitely takes it. All right, son, take us to the next category. I don't really agree with those ones, but hey, I'm not the running chief fanatic. Don't tell my dad I said that. I'll be kicked out of the house. I have to live in the streets. Not cool. Okay, now, Spice Girl Shoes, Max Stack, Daily Trainers, The Nike Invincible 3, New Balance, 1080, 13, Asics, Gel Nimbus, 25, one of the best shoes of the year. Oh yeah, the, oh, I forgot, uh, the On Running, 
Cloud Surfer. Seven. Nice. Okay, daily trainers, but with a max stack. So these are your, just get your shoes on running, but intentional comfort has been placed in the midsoles of these shoes. Starting us off at number four. Now this is gonna be very subjective, possibly controversial. So please comment down below to tell me what you think of this listing. But to me, just depending on how I felt running in these shoes, this is how I rate them. This is easily the best upgrade that any running shoe company has done from a previous version. So 1080 version 12 going into the version 13, the comfort that they have added in this, absolutely perfect. You have to try this shoe out. Okay, so number three, on running's Cloud Surfer 7. Now this was innovative, revolutionary from on running. They removed the speedboard, they revisited the trench, it stopped you from collecting stones, that kind of thing. And the comfort that the Cloud Surfer 7 put on running on a scale and at par with other running shoe brands. To me, this was what the monster of last year was actually supposed to be. That's just my opinion. However, they released another one and we will get to that. I don't want to spoil it. One of my most views video on my YouTube channel is a comparison of these two shoes. A6 Gel Nimbus 25 and Nike's Invincible 3. And when you choose one, you're obviously going to disappoint some other people. So for me, if you want, I could rate these both as equal. But for me personally, let me emphasize for me personally. And actually, you know what? I'm going to encourage you in the comment section to tell me which one of these two you prefer. So for me personally, coming in runner up at number two, is the gel numbers 25. Now the reason is simple here, very simple. I just haven't run in this one as much as I have this. And the reason for that is because I find this to be a bit more specific to the brief. I find this to be much more comfortable. My zone two run, slow and easy run. When I just wanna enjoy running, I reach for the Invincible 3 more than I do the Gel Nimbus 25. But to be honest, it's, it's a hair apart. Literally nitpicking to find the difference. For me personally, number two is A6 Gel Nimbus 25 if you want a daily trainer that's well comfortable, well cushioned, uh, with a good stack. But for me personally, Nike Invincible 3 is the definition, is the benchmark of what a max cushion daily trainer should be. These are all super trainers. Daily trainers, but with a plate in them. Not the plate that you have your dinner on. Come on people, be reasonable here. And not the plate, tectonic plates that make up mountains. Starting us off at number three is On Running's Cloud Stratus 3. This came out an upgrade from the two and it's been upgraded and you can tell that upgrade from the comfort it offers. I genuinely love this shoe and it's quite similar to the feel you get from the Monster, but I find this one to be much more comfortable. Okay, so at number two is Hawker's Mark X. Now you can tell from the name if you know Hawker very well, you've got the Mark V and then you've got the Rocket X. This is their baby. Great performance, the cushioning is good. The plate within there also brings in that extra added oomph. Now, I bought this one with my own money, but I loved it so much that when Hawker offered me uh, a free pair of shoes at their store launch in Covent Garden in London, I decided to get another one. Boom, at number one is Puma's Deviate Nitro 2. The Nitro Elite is gonna make an appearance later, but this is exactly what I would like in a daily trainer that's got a plate in it. Here's why. Um, the midsole within this offers me comfort that I don't think the other two shoes, according to me, how I run my preference, the comfort in here, the other two shoes just don't simply have. And I love it for that. The other thing is the price. This is the most affordable of the two. And I've shopped around and I've seen some prices. And lastly, this outsole, Puma is working with Harry Potter and other witches and wizards in working out how to do the outsoles. This is simply one of my favorite daily trainers and I've done a review on it. You can see it on the channel as I have done with all the other shoes that you're watching, but this is my most recent review since recording this video. This truly is number one. The next category is Max Stack Shoes. This one, 
represents John Travolta. This one, the Spice Girls. And this one, one of my favorite basketball players ever, Shaq. These are at least 2,800,000, 5,085,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
The other thing is the colorway. The reason I said I've got a soft spot for this shoe, when I had somewhere around 400 to 600 subscribers, Mizuno were trusting enough to send me a pair for review. And for that reason, Mizuno have a trusted partner in me. Thank you very much. Number four, to me, feels like it should be number one. The reason is this. This is the only shoe amongst the race day category that goes below 200 pounds. So much so, I found a link for this on a Puma website for 140. So look, if you want a race day shoe that you don't need a bank loan for, this is that. If you want a race day shoe that's so versatile that you can do a race day, fast workouts, a long run, easy run, this is that. If you want the best performing outsole, especially as we're going into winter, this is that shoe. I'm happy to see Puma make two appearances in this list. On Running's Cloud Boom Echo 3. On Running, this year has turned a corner. They've basically started making serious running shoes. What do I mean by that? On Running have been known to be exceptional in terms of how they look. They're a good lifestyle brand. Stylistically, you can't really mess with On Running. I love them. And for, to a certain extent, that's as far as they got. When they did the Monster, I was like, hold on. This year they did the Cloud Surfer 7, which you saw earlier, hold on. They've just done a Cloud Eclipse, hold on. So when they announced the new Cloud Boom Echo, you had to respect it. New Peeba foam, just the way it performs, the upper. It started to contend with shoes like the Vaporfly 3 in terms of performance, but I have to say it's the appearance as well that you can't really look down on. So, well done for that. Number three, Cloud Boom Echo 3. Let's go to number two. I don't know what to say, but it's true. This is now number two in my world. Now, why is it number two and not number one? Well, I found a shoe that does work for me better. Why was it number one previously is more the point. This is the lightest shoe I own in my entire collection. This is the most breathable shoe I own in my entire collection. Aesthetically, I love the design in my entire collection. I did get disappointed slightly with the outsole. I can see wear and tear within that, which I didn't expect so early on. But you know what? Everything about this shoe is exactly what a running shoe should be. When you talk about the lacing system, it's very simple. They're ribbed laces. Genius. This is definitely number two. It deserves to be up there. And I just simply love this for what it is. Well done, Nike, for this shoe. Okay, so number one, the Hoka Rocket X2. I'm about to go on an adventure with this shoe, simply because Hoka's turned the corner. I don't know what they were doing. I think either they've recruited someone new or someone in the design department has woken up, but they've done this shoe, they've done the Mark X, they've done the Cielo. Everything Hoka is doing now is exactly what I think they should have been doing all along. Like. I can't even talk about the first version of this shoe. The performance you get from this shoe, the weight of it, the propulsion, but more importantly, this is the most comfortable running shoe I own. So much so that I bought the Fiance one too. Now, here is where this earns its place at number one. My fiance Jenny had tried running before. I, I got her some running shoes and every time she went on a run, three, four days after the run, she had knee pains and it would stop her going running. I then got her the Puma Deviate Elite 2 and she said it felt better and she carried on running. After that, I kind of thought, actually, let me try. I found comfort in the Hocker Rocket X2. Maybe she should give it a go. And she did. This is the shoe she reaches for and it's the most comfortable amongst the shoes that she owns. And for me personally, that is testament of the performance of this shoe. And so, for 2023, the number one running shoe for me is this shoe. The reason why it stops being recommended to most is its price, that's all. But for me personally, if I could choose any running shoe to run in for all time to come, Hoka Rocket X2. Before we sign off, I've got two questions to ask you. One, what has been your favorite running shoe of the year, 2023? 
two. What has been your favorite YouTube channel of the year? Please enter in the comments. We really want to know. I'm into that. May the Lord bless you. See you later.